for talking to me about it. <laughs> yeah. So I was able to watch the film yesterday and I really enjoyed it. So I was looking forward to getting to speak with you about it. And I wanted to get started asking about the inspiration for the script and where you maybe came up with the idea for the film and just your overall writing experience of it. Yeah, uh, so this film, the inspiration came on probably like 10 years ago. I I still do this, but I was on YouTube just looking for scary stuff to watch uh, and came across some videos about like, oh, like so many people are going missing in our national parks and um, why, like here are some spooky stories. And so like, I was like, okay, spooky these are spooky stories and they started reading more about the spooky stories and like the spooky the the creepy ways that people were going missing and and really just getting very affected by it and just being like this is genuinely scary to me like this is very terrifying (laughs) and anytime I'm like that I'm like I'm this is what I want like I want to explore this I want to I want to find out why I'm feeling creeped out about it I want to see if I can creep other people out with it like I want to figure this out for myself and so that that's where it all started um was was based in this sort of like conspiracy theory phenomenon of of these people just disappearing or just being there one moment and gone the next moment and and just having fun with like what what's the creepiest possible thing that could be happening (laughs) Mm -hmm. besides working on the script um what was your experience like then going on to direct the film and I saw this was your first feature that you directed and just overall what was that experience like going from working on the script into directing uh it was really incredible I've always wanted to be a director um writing was something that I enjoyed but I actually never really thought I was very good at <laughs> like, so like finding my career in writing has been a genuine surprise and uh way after the wind and after having just the most amazing experience with Emma um I I was like the next one's mine the next one I'm gonna is mine I'm gonna do it and um then just going through the process of it of finding financiers it's it's an independent film uh so getting to like flex that to be getting to be like I know how to do the hard work in this and I know that it's not going to be easy we're not going to have like long times to be able to do this we shot them to be in three weeks it's it's going to be like hard but part of that is is just so exciting and getting to like step onto a set that's yours and getting to like take your words and your thoughts and and put it onto into a camera and put it I was like onto film but no put it into a camera and and see it come out through the editing and come out through the it's just been like the most incredible and most rewarding experience and I have learned so much about all of it again and and about myself and about what what I am capable of and I think that that I hope those lessons continue I hope that I I continue to find to surprise myself too and be like you can you're, you can do this like I think so much of that uh uh is uh it's it's just the most rewarding experience Mm-hmm. And while I was watching the film, I liked how, um, even though there are parts where there wasn't much dialogue, there was um, exposition until um, the past through like flashbacks and also like the radio and podcasts and everything. And how did you really find that balance and kind of delving into the past and blending that into the present um, in that kind of unique way as well? I don't like dialogue and I know that about myself now <laughs> and mm-hmm. it, um, I really like to sit with characters I really like to feel and I, I, I like to find ways to get I, I mean everybody does but to get like exposition out without having to like explain anything <laughs> and mm-hmm. that that's that's the challenge in a lot of ways is just to like, how do you, how do you get this story across with just one woman in the woods? How do you get all of these feelings across with just one woman in the woods and this whole story? 
and that challenge and, and just leaning into it and being like, here's how I'm going to say this. Here's what I'm going to show you so that you understand this part. Here's like this discussion that will happen, but both of these people know things and now you should, you know, that thing too. So it, it should feel more like a discussion instead of like, I'm telling you something. Um, yeah, it's, it's all just kind of like, uh, a puzzle <laughs> to put together and in in the best way the best kind of puzzle um also speaking about the story taking place largely in the woods um what was that experience like as well and really figuring out where you wanted to shoot the film and really getting to create the look for the film as well we shot the film in portugal uh um i i really wanted it to have like a sequoia or a Yosemite vibe, like a feeling that we're in like this like mountainous rocky terrain and Portugal just really helps push into that, uh, get and certainly get us into places that I don't think we would have had access to at our budget period. <laughs> um, and and it, it was incredible to shoot outside and to be outside. Um, I, I really, I enjoy the woods. I grew up camping a, a lot of my interests and a lot of the reason I found those stories so compelling was because th that was where all of my vacations were as a kid and ha being able to like have my first movie in nature, I think was, was just, I mean, anytime something like anytime you were having a moment or somebody was taking or you felt like something was taking too long or what, whatever was happening any stressor that happened it, it, it just like turn around and look at the lake for a second or just like mm -hmm. admire the trees or listen to the birds and it's just like kind of be present with nature and that was genuinely a gift to have uh I loved it I we had so many locations and there were so many company moves and so many things going on that it it felt rushed in a lot of ways and, and felt pushed and we were pushing ourselves all the time but um ha being able to just sort of like touch a tree <laughs> just mm -hmm. be like i'm i'm here with real things <laughs> this is this is mm -hmm. this is okay <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, I wanted to ask about uh, creating like the stunts for the film as well. Were there a lot of like practical stunts that you had to do on set, or what was that experience like as well? Uh, I pushed really hard for practical everything. Um, things are enhanced digitally. Um, there, there's a deer that's enhanced digitally, but there was also a real deer on set. <laughs> and, uh, there's um like a, a face thing that's enhanced digitally but the the face thing was also worn by the actor um yeah I, I think everything in the movie had a practical beginning and that is is wonderful for me it, it it made shooting it and seeing it and really knowing like what what it was gonna eventually look like the idea of what it was going to look like so much more exciting and I always I'm a huge practical effects nerd like I oh I, I love it I love it <laughs> I love to feel it through the screen sort of thing <laughs> I want it <laughs> and also what was your experience like getting to work with your um, DP on the film and collaborating together to figure out how you wanted to visually shoot the movie as well yeah, uh, Rui Pogus is uh, the cinematographer and he was wonderful. He has such like the most chill like vibe, just like, hey, I got this sort of thing. And he really, just really listened, really just like, did. We, we talked, we showed pictures to each other. He, he like, uh, he lived in the area he brought me one of his art books and I flipped through, I was like this or this and like just such a collaborator in all the different ways. And like one of the things, one of our challenges in the DP space was like, we're in the woods and realistically she's only got this flashlight. And like, we're like, yeah, 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 yeah. So we, we worked with it. We rolled with it and we, we 
I used, you know, bounce boards and really tried to see like how we could get this, like we're in the woods with only a flashlight look um, yeah. without everything else that would come into that. So yeah, it was really just like fun <laughs> to <laughs> sort of experiment in that space. And he was so down to do it. Um, just uh, such a pleasure to work with. And besides the visuals, I also like the score that you had in the film. And what was that process like of really creating like the music and the score for the film as well? Uh, Shida Shahavi uh, wrote the score, is our, is our composer. And she is my favorite person. That score, like, mm -hmm. I'm a fan of that score. I cannot mm -hmm. believe it's in my movie. She is just, uh, my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what? like you're you're talking to me like I'm I I use my hands a lot I don't know a lot about music uh in that in the sense where I could talk about it with notes or whatever and so I was just like babbling on and she's just like yeah no I get that I get that and I was like really she's like yeah I do I do I was like cool 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 yeah 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 that that I want it to feel like it's I want to feel the wood I want to feel like the nature part of it and the nature aspects of it and how can we bring this in and we just talked about different things that we've liked and uh this is what came out of it and it's such a pleasure to have her score in this movie I am blown away by that screen. <laughs> I can't wait mm -hmm. to have it <laughs> <laughs> Also, you mentioned um, the editing process um, earlier, and I wanted to follow up on that. And how did you decide to kind of visually and just emotionally put the film together? And what was that experience like as well? Uh, Ale Alexander Amick, Alexandra Amick, um, I call her Alex, so Alex Amick, um, she mm -hmm. is the editor for this movie, and she edited The Wind. Um, and so I knew her from that. I She's she just gets my brain and I don't know if, if <laughs> I don't know I she was so worried like the first day uh on this movie I I walk in we're potting up because it's still the pandemic she's editing from her house I walk in and she's like okay everybody hates the first cut of their movie and I was like okay and she's like so it's okay it's okay I was like okay and so like I sat down and I watched it and I was like Alex is great and she was like <laughs> really I was like yeah like I mean we have to get to work on it but like there it is mm -hmm. <laughs> you did it like it's here um she is like I she just gets it and she's she's an editor that contributes so much more in the sense that she's like we cut a piece and I'm like but I like we cut a little scene and I was like but I still want something there to bridge the gap, but like, we can't reshoot it. Like, how are we going to do? And so like, we're brainstorming and she came up with this great idea. And that was like the, um, the sinking tree was like a hundred percent Alex being like, what if this happened? And I was like, that would be so cool. Mm -hmm. Let's figure that out. Like we have the tree, let's figure this out. And so like, she's, she, she just gets my thinking and I, I'm, uh, I love it. She's wonderful. I, always want to work with her <laughs> <laughs> and now with the film having its world premiere um coming up at Fantasia what's that experience been like of gearing up to have the premiere and getting to share the movie with audiences at the festival as well? I am so excited like the thing I'm looking most forward to is just sitting in that audience and just like feeling people watching it and and people watching it for the first time and I hope that like there's a part that makes my husband gag every time and I hope that there are some people who <laughs> have that reaction <laughs> like there are there are moments and I'm, I'm just like I'm so looking forward to sharing this movie with everyone and and really really just getting it out it, I feel like it's it's so much more stressful to just like have it around and like everybody's like here's our here's our plan here's how we're here's how we're going to try and get it into the festival circuit here's how we're going to try and do this all of this stuff um but I I feel like just having people watch it is just going to like 
something, some anxiety, some muscle that I've been holding for like three years is just going to relax. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait for that. <laughs> if there, I'm going to Fantasia. Um, do you have any other festivals or maybe an official release coming up that you can also discuss? Nothing, nothing like that yet. And I, I will absolutely, um, like share that inf I'm sure other people share that information when we have it but not nothing yet so I just excited to see what happens and hopefully it just releases it into the wild and we're able to just go on <laughs> yeah, I think that was mainly it but thank you again for taking the time to speak with me I appreciate it thank you so much uh I hope you have a great day <laughs> Thanks again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye.